As a lifelong Houstonian, I've seen the damages that hurricanes have caused to my city, and I watched as Harvey continued uh, in a devastating way that damage. Uh, so in the face of a warming climate that leads to more powerful storms, uh, how much of a priority would climate change be to your administration, and what are some plans you have to tackle that issue? Thank you for the question. I think uh, the concern that you have, I share at the highest level. I, was, I came to, here to Houston during Hurricane Harvey. I went to New Orleans during Katrina, and I've seen for myself what is happening in this country and around the world. But let's maybe bring up the topic of the day, which is the Green New Deal. Um, I read with great interest what they were suggesting. And I think these are well-intentioned people and like me, are gravely concerned about our planet, climate change, and the things that we have to do. So the first answer to the question is, this would be a top priority. But we have to be sensible about it. So here we are in Texas, where mm -hmm. oil and gas is a primary product of, of this entire state. But yet you lead the nation in wind energy. So it's not an either-or situation. We can do both. But when I read the proposed bill, in terms of the, the Green New Deal, and I read that in, by 2030, they're suggesting that every building in America is, becomes clean energy, conforms to clean energy. Just to put that in perspective, because it's not realistic, that would mean that between two and 3,000 buildings a day would have to be reconstructed to conform to what they're saying. So and so let's be sensible about what we're suggesting Let's not just throw stuff against a wall because it's a good slogan or we get a press release. Let's be truthful. And if there's one thing that I'm trying to do tonight more than anything else is tell you what I believe, tell you what I believe is true, and speak to you from my heart for someone who, is, who loves the country, who has benefited tremendously from the promise of the country and wants to see that continue. But when I see polit politicians start throwing things out that I know is not realistic. That is not being honest with the American people. Mr. Schultz, on the Green New Deal, it includes a federal jobs guarantee. Yeah. Are you supportive of that? And you mentioned Democrats throwing up slogans. Uh, a number of 2020 contenders support the Green New Deal. It's proposed by Senator Markey yeah. and Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Do you think that they are being disingenuous with the American people? I, what I, what I, what, when I read the Green New Deal, and I try and understand what they're suggesting. I don't understand how you're gonna give a job for everybody, how you're gonna give free college to everybody, uh, how you're going to create clean energy throughout the country in every building of the land, and then tally this thing up with $32 trillion on Medicare for all. That's about $40 trillion plus. We are sitting, ladies and gentlemen, with $22 trillion of debt on the balance sheet of America. So once again, I, not that I'm a business person or I'm, or I'm an economist, and maybe a, an economist would disagree with me, but I think it's not, it's immoral to suggest that we can tally up 20, 30, 40, 50 trillion dollars of debt to solve a problem that could be solved in a different way. It's not that they're disingenuous, I think they're well-intentioned, it's, this is not personal. I just don't agree this is the right way to approach things. So let's get to another key question uh, with us, because you were, until you know, a matter of months ago, a lifelong Democrat. You've contributed mostly to Democratic candidates, yeah. but the party, you've said, has moved too far left for you. So let's go to a Democratic yeah. voter who has a question for you, Marika McCool. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, so you openly uh, opposed Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's proposal to raise the marginal tax rate to 70% 70 per, 70 on incomes over $10 million. So if you're elected president and being a member of the group of people who earn over $10 million, what would your proposed tax yeah. plan be? Thank you for the question. Uh, I'm going to try and explain this uh, to you in a very personal way. First off, I should, be, I, I should be paying more taxes. And people who are in the bracket of making millions of dollars, or whatever the number might be, should be paying more taxes. But we have to go back a year or so. I was very vocally against President Trump's 
corporate tax break, of lowering the corporate tax rate from 35 to 21 percent. I was against it because corporations should not have been given that sweet deal without any incentive to do anything for their employees or the communities they serve, education, training, whatever. There was a tremendous opportunity for the United States to have comprehensive tax reform. And that would have meant higher, higher rates on individuals like myself. Corporate tax uh, rate of 21% should have never happened. Mm -hmm. And we should have examined how can we create comprehensive tax reform so that we could lower the taxes for the middle class. But the headline is here, I should be paying more taxes and people who make this kind of revenue and of, of means should make should pay more taxes. So on, on that point, yeah. you've just said twice, I yeah. should pay more taxes. And, and America's question, important question, was yeah. about personal income tax. How much yeah. should the wealthy pay in this country? I, You're a billionaire. Yeah. Give me a sense. Are, are you talking about you should pay 2% higher? 10% higher, 20% higher federal income tax? I don't, uh, Poppy, I don't know what the number is. I think what I'm saying is we I, need comprehensive ball, tax reform. Ballpark it for people, because it, it makes a difference. You know, Would it go up to you know the, 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 the rate under President Clinton, or are we talking about significantly higher? I, I, what I, I think is what being proposed at 70% is a punitive number, and I think there are better ways to do this. So what's not punitive? I, I don't know what the number is, but I, what I'm suggesting is I should be paying higher taxes. And I think people across the country are willing to pay more, higher taxes. But there's a caveat there. And the caveat is this. But is it higher than 2% more, for example? I think it is. But okay. I mean, let me just I'd qualify this. That's very important. If you look at the American people and you ask them this following question, do you trust the government? Do you trust Congress? Most people in America say, I've lost trust and confidence in Congress and certainly in the president. And so when you ask people to pay more taxes, we have to make sure that there is a, mm -hmm. a agreement that your additional tax dollars are going to be spent wisely by the government. And that goes back to the gentleman's question about whether or not we're going to spend 20 or 30 or 40 trillion dollars on a Green New Deal that we can't afford. There are other ways to do it. And I, so I think this is a very important point. We need comprehensive tax reform in the United States, where the people who are, pay, who are making more are paying, paying more taxes. We're lowering the tax for middle class Americans, and we're doing it in a comprehensive so, way. In addition to that, there should be infrastructure development. And one of the things I've learned this year, which really surprises me, is that about 20, 30 percent of people who live in rural America do not have broadband access. Mm -hmm. FDR, more than 60 years ago, made it a right for every American to have electricity. It should be a right for every American family to have broadband access. So we're, we're living in a digital age. We can't leave the American people behind. That we are. Although I could get off Twitter from now, now and then okay. from time to time. You said on 60 Minutes, Mr. Schultz, that you would release your tax returns today. Will you commit to releasing your tax returns this week? Well, I'm, I'm not yet decided to run for president, but if I decide to run for president, I 100% will release my taxes and be completely transparent. And here's why I ask, yeah. because I remember, we all remember May 2014, yeah. when now President Trump was mulling a bid for the White House, yeah. and he said exactly the same thing. Yeah, but I think President Trump, unfortunately, has a habit of not being truthful. And I think... <laughs> I think I, I, I raise my hand to all of you, and I can promise you, not only will I pay my, t will pay my taxes, not only will I, <laughs> will I release my tax refund. Well, there you go. Yeah. He'll pay his taxes. But I want I to say something else. The, what, what is lacking right now in the country when we, when we can't get an immigration bill, when we've got a level of debt that we have, when we've got a failing education system, a health care system that is a crisis, and millions of Americans that no longer have access to the prospects of the American dream. All of this is about one thing, and that is no one has stood up and said, I am going to be accountable for the results. If I run for president, I raise my hand and I'm say, I am accountable to solve these problems. And if we look at all of these issues that I've just gone through, and we can go through them again, the debt, the health care issue, education, all of the issues, immigration, these, this is not new. This has been with us for years.